earlier in the day had to, the chance to catch up with Temple head coach Fran Dunphy. Really good dude. They got a big game coming up. It's his last year as a head coach. We hit that and several other things. I think you'll enjoy the, the conversation. Coach, uh, first of all, just thank you so much for making time and congrats on, on a successful career and what is looking like a very successful final season for you as a head coach at this level. Thank you for being here. Well, my pleasure, Bill. It's more from Larry Dacker, he's urging. He thought this was a great idea and, uh, and I would get a chance to, to talk with a great guy like you and uh, I appreciate it. Well, in that case, I appreciate Larry. All right, let's um let's flip things around a little bit. I do want to get to just whatever it feels like for you as a, a guy who's stepping away from the game to go through this final season. But let's make the case real quickly for Temple. I know you have a huge game at UConn coming up. That's a tough, tough place to play. You have US, UCF at home. Make the case for folks who maybe haven't paid enough attention to Temple why your, your team, your squad, belongs hopefully in the tournament in March. Well, I hope we've done a good job throughout the year. We have some really good road victories. We've played uh, a terrific schedule and I think we have a terrific league the American is, has done a great job this year obviously uh, Houston has garnered most of the attention Cincinnati as well uh, UCF they, they've had terrific seasons all three of those teams so uh, we hope that we're in the mix there and the only thing we can do and the only thing we can control is our game against UConn on Thursday and our game against UCF on Saturday we have a big week in front of us and if we can continue to play well and win games, then then I hope we, we, we catch everybody's eye. That's all. Uh, I think we have a terrific group of guys. They've, they've played well. They've done well. They've, they've represented this institution very well. So we're excited by it. But, no, we have a long, long way to go yet. I, I know in a coach's world, all that's really going on is the next game up. As you and your staff look at the tape, prepare for UConn, what do you see? What do you need to do to try to get the outcome that you're hoping for? Well, I see Dan Hurley's coaching absolutely imprinted all over his team. They just play hard every possession, and they know what they're doing. They have a plan. Uh, they've, they've had some injuries throughout the, the season. One of their, their best players, Jalen Adams, got hurt in our game the first time we played. So, And it had a big difference in the game. So, uh, And last year, we had a really good win against UConn here at home, and then we, we got uh, beat up a little bit when we went to UConn. We know how difficult a place it is, and we have just tremendous respect for their program. You know, Coach, one of the things we've talked a lot about here on the program, just because it's NBA season, is how much team basketball across the NBA is having an impact in a positive way. Teams like Denver, I mean, I won't bore you with all the teams, but you guys are very similar. You don't have a lot of set starters. It is a team effort, night in, night out. What is it about that approach and that philosophy that's helped make your program, and this year in particular, successful? Well, you know, Bill, we're pretty steady on our three guards that we put out there all the time. And those three guys have had pretty good seasons, led by Shiz Alston, who, uh, who has had a terrific, terrific season for us, not only on the court, but off the court as well. And his leadership has meant so much to us. So, uh, But we do have some interchangeable parts, and we think that we're a, a fairly deep team, and we, we, can, we can play a lot of different styles. We can, we can figure out how to get it done if it's a slowdown game, and we, we also – figure it out how to uh, compete at a pretty high level on those teams that are multiple multiple uh, possessions. And uh, so we have to be able to play. We're not a team that, that presents our style to somebody else. We react to the to the style of the other team. So hopefully we're, we're in the mix each and every game. And uh, it, it's interesting in college basketball and the pro game as well. So many times the game comes down to a possession or a made three at one end, a missed three at the other. And, uh, and the game is decided. It's incredible how close these games are. So winning and losing is so fragile. And we figured it out pretty well so far, but we need to continue along that vein. You know, competitors are competitive, and basketball players always want to be able to make an impact on a game. What is the key? If you were giving advice to a young coach, how do you create a culture where guys understand that from moment to moment, situation to situation, sometimes – the most important part of their role may not be being on the floor. How, how do you create a culture where that's not just accepted, but embraced? You know, I, I think you plan for that every single day, Bill. I, I think that's what you talk to your kids about all the time. Uh, obviously you want to be the best defensive team always because it keeps you in games. There's going to be some games where the shots are going to go. And there's other games where the defense on the other team is outstanding. So each possession is so critical. 
What you're ha asking them to do always, though, is to be focused and try not to think about themselves and lose themselves in, in the heat of the game, to really keep their poise each and every possession. Because the game's, the game mo game's momentum can change on a play. Uh, we had a good play last night where we had a, a, a pretty sizable lead. We missed a layup in transition. They ran it down and got a three. And all of a sudden, the game changed. The momentum of the game changed. So we're asking our, our guys always to, to be thinking that way and to also sort of have, have a motto of it's not about you. It's always about the team. That doesn't mean you're going to uh, take a back seat to anybody or anything. And if you have an open shot, by all means, you're, you're uh, uh, encouraged to take it. You're encouraged to make it as well, but you're encouraged to take it. Uh, but it, it is about the team. And if, if everybody buys in, and especially if your leaders buy in, then you've got a pretty good chance to have a good team. Coach, you are retiring at the end of the year. I'm just curious for you, are there moments, I'm sure you try to keep it consistent, but are there moments where it, it hits you that, that this is it in terms of you being a head coach in college basketball where it feels different, where you feel like you have a sense of a unique perspective on the game and your life, given a year from now, you'll, you'll be doing something different. Yeah, you know what? I haven't thought too much about it at all. I, I have a pretty uh, staying in the moment guy. Uh, you, you said, we used the word retirement. I'm hoping to be busier than I ever was, to be honest with you. I want to do so many different things and to include helping to teach more classes here at Temple and, and to do other things in the Temple community, in the Philadelphia community, if I can do it. Uh, and I'll do whatever anybody would ask me to do. So. Uh, I, I don't like the word retirement, to be honest with you. I'm going to step away from coaching at Temple, and I'm, I'm excited about the transition we're making to Aaron McKee. I think he's going to do a terrific job. So this is a wonderful institution with a, an, an, incredible, uh, uh, an incredible mission here in Philadelphia, and I, and I think I want to do as much as I can to, to help foster that. So, uh, But I haven't gotten out of the mode of uh, we're playing Connecticut on Thursday, and, and, I, and I haven't really wavered too much from that. Sure. No, I, I totally understand. I want to uh, circle back to Alston. You talked about Shiz and just what he can be, one of your your leaders. When it comes to be tournament time, and hopefully you guys are, are competing in, in March Madness, can you give me a sense of your confidence level in him, what he can do, you think, for this team, when obviously those moments can be fairly pressure-packed and having leadership can be can be pretty important? Yeah, I think it, it is. Um, it's a vital importance, and I, I will give you an example. Let's say there's a, you're you're up three or down three with four minutes to go in the game, and that last four minute timeout has hit. Uh, the kids come over for your timeout instructions, and for me, it's a little different with Shiz. You're you're asking him, okay, uh, what's going on out there? What do you think you want to run this next offensive set? Do we want to switch everybody on the perimeter here? Do we want to switch one through four? Uh, where do you want the ball? If we set that high ball screen for you, where do you want it? Which side of the floor? And, and how do you want your, your big guy to react? Do you want him to pop? Do you want him to short roll? Do you want him to dive to the basket? I, I give him so much ownership in what it is. And obviously, I give a, a lot of ownership to our staff as well. And whoever has that game, we're, we're asking a lot of them to contribute uh, as to what's going to go on on the floor. But I would say at this point, Shiz has a lot to say with what we're doing and, and how we're approaching the game before the game and certainly during the game as well. Obviously, there's a lot of basketball to be played before the selection committee makes its decisions, but those of us in the media and fans like to prognosticate well in advance. We've got one of the best in the business to do that in Jerry Palm. He currently has Temple at an 11 seed, so hopefully things go well going forward. I know that's your focus is to try to get this, this group of guys and your staff and yourself into the tournament. If you get there, which would be what I think maybe time 17 if I'm not mistaken, in, in your career, what, what would it mean to you to uh, to cap this portion of your career with, with that accomplishment? Well, it would mean a, a lot to the institution. It would mean a lot to our coaching staff. It would mean so much to our players, in particular our seniors. Again, Shiz it would mean a lot to, and he, he, would have a, he would have a lot to do with it if we make it. And also Ernest Aflacby, who has been with us for these same four years. <laughs> It means a lot to these guys, it's, uh, and it should because it's what we all play for. This is the, the crowning uh, moment in your season. If you can perhaps get to the NCAA tournament, uh, that, that means everything to, to our program and to our university. So uh, that's what we're all hoping for. But, again, we've got a long way to go, and, and as we break it up, we typically break it up in weeks during the course of the year, and this week is uh, obviously one that is very, very challenging for us. And 
we're looking forward to it, really excited by it, but know how, uh, how difficult it will be. Coach, I know you're a busy man. I want to close just very quickly with this. We do this show five days a week. It's a lot of work, and the producer of this show is a Temple grad. So you guys did an amazing job uh, preparing him, at least, to uh, to work his tail off. So we, we appreciate you double. We appreciate that you're here, and thank you for the great education to to producer Tom or producer Rob, excuse me, and, uh, and thank you so much for, for making time for us, and congratulations. Well, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it very much. Appreciate the support from you guys, and uh, if we can... We can bring home another uh, NCAA tournament bid for Temple University, that'd be great.